Hey, what's going on everybody? This episode, we're gonna be talking about hash sets. And this is to continue our discussion on collections. And if you are following along, you'll probably have code that looks something like this. We got some custom objects and we're gonna be working with those later. But the main thing, I'm just gonna show you guys the main thing if you're just jumping in. If you already got this code, just follow along for a second. But essentially, we have, I'm just kinda commenting it out because we're gonna use it later, but not right now. But we have these custom objects and in here, we over, overrided the equals and the hash code methods. So we did that for person. And we originally did it for this position, although we ended up deleting it. So what we're gonna do is just go in here and source, generate hash code and equals, and go ahead, generate. All right, so we got all of that. So the reason I did all that is because this hash code method is actually really important for hash sets and just like hash maps, but we don't really have to worry about it a whole lot except for when we're working with custom types. So if you're creating your own classes, then you have to worry about it because you have to make sure that hash code method is working properly in order for the hash sets to work and be optimized for their, their most optimization. Yes, optimized for optimization, there we go. English, okay. So we're gonna start with strings though because we don't actually have to do anything. The hash code method is already good to go. So we'll just say string hello. And then we'll create another string, very creative names. And then to create a hash set, you just say hash set and pass in a type. So this is generic. Give it some name like words. and that is the syntax. Now, you will need to import, so go ahead and hover over that and import from java.util.hashset, so it'll look something like this. And then all you gotta do is say words.add. So you can see the add method is available to the set, unlike the hash map. So this should ultimately inherit from the collection interface. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in hello, the variable hello, and the variable by. And now I want to explore this hash set just to see and confirm that it does inherit from collection. So we'll explore this and this extends ha abstract set. So go into there, implements set, go into there and that extends collection. So ultimately there's an interface collection that this gets some requirements from including the add method. So very cool, let's go back to our code and continue our thing here. And the way we print this out, we can use a for each loop. It's gonna look something like this. String s, and then a colon, and where it comes from, words, and then all we have to do is say sys out s. I forgot a very important word here, new, which really changes everything, so make sure you put new and this is going to now make our syntax pretty and we should be able to run and we get the words hello and bye. Now I'm using this through variables. You don't actually have to do that. It's actually just kind of an extra step, but if you are working with variables, that's how it would work. You can actually just pass in the data directly here and it should work exactly the same way. Cool, so what I wanna do is I wanna add some more data in here and now let's run it. And you can see we still only have two entries in there, hello and bye. So each repeat doesn't matter, doesn't affect the data. Now let's just change up some of these words. All right, so I got some random words in here and let's run this and let's see. When we go in here, you can see that ABC is at the top. Then we got dogs, then char. It doesn't seem like there's any kind of order. At first you might think it's alphabetical because A, B, C is up here, but no, because then it goes to D and then C, so nope, that can't be it. It's not in the order we inserted it. It's not in the opposite order. So what's going on here? Well, if you guys remember with the hash map or when we just talked about hash code, it's actually using the hash code method on these strings to determine where to insert these things into the set. So the hash code is calculated, is then processed to get an index, and that is the position for the element. So the key thing here with the set is it's unordered. If you want it to be ordered, you don't want to use a hash set. There is, however, a tree set, or you might just be able to use like an array list if you are not worried about duplicate data. 
there's all kinds of different collections available to you to meet your exact needs in terms of repeating data, sorted, whether there's keys or no keys, and so forth. So in the situation of a set, there is no key. We just have the data itself. So what that means is if we're trying to find the data, we would say words dot contains, and then we actually have to pass in the exact object that we're looking for. So the equals has to evaluate to true. So we would put in hello as a string, and let's just see what this outputs. We run this, and the very last thing is true. So it does contain hello, and it's actually able to find that very fast. It doesn't have to traverse through the entire collection because all it does is it takes this data here, runs the hash code method, and figures out what position it's going to be at, and hello, we already have one there. So it works very quickly. It's one of the fastest for inserts and retrievals. That's because it doesn't matter how big the set is, it's going to be pretty much the same speed. In other words, it's constant time. There is no exponential increase with the increase of the size of the collection. But I'm getting into like algorithms and data structures, which I don't really wanna do in depth in this series here. So let's just get back to what we were talking about. The thing is you have to pass in the data exactly the equals has to match. And one of the problems with this is if you are working with custom types such as people, you have to pass in that entire person object. So you would have to create that object and have all the attributes match in order for you to pass it into this contains method. Whoops, into this contains method. So for a string, it's really simple because we just put that string there. But if we were working with people, let's see what that will, would look like. So let's get rid of all these words. Get rid of this here. And what I want to do is I want to change this hash set to type person. And get rid of these comments. So we have two people that we've created in the previous episode. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, well, we probably wanna rename it. Let's rename this to people and say people.add. And we're going to pass in P. And then we'll say people.add and pass in Q. So we added the two people. And if we want to search for that particular person, we would have to do this people dot contains, and we'd have to pass in that object. So in this situation, we have that object very easily available to us right there. So it should work just fine. Running this, we get the value true. But if we did not have this person object available to us in this scope, we would have to go in here and we would basically have to create a new person object. I can't call it new. <laughs> new person oh position new position so we pretty much have to build out the whole thing new person dot position is new position and then what we could do is we could pass in new person Running this, we still get true, and that's because we overrided the equals method inside of the person object. So make sure you do that. So you can see it's a little bit complicated if you're working with custom types for searching for data. So that is where hash maps really come in useful. If instead of searching for objects by passing in the object, you wanted to search by a key, so maybe the person's email or maybe their user ID or their last name, that is where a hash map comes in handy as you guys learned because in that situation you actually have two data types. So you would say hash map and pass in, for example, a string for the email and a string, or not a string, we would pass in a person for the actual data. So that would be the structure if we wanted to do it by that. And then you could search through this data using just the person's email. So it looks something like this. We would import this first, and then we would say peeps dot contains key, and we would pass in some key such as 
email at email.com. And this would return true if that email exists as a key, which means we would probably want to put that that key inside here. So peeps.put, what's the key? It's going to be email at email.com and the value itself is going to be that object so we could use new person in this situation. And make sure you close your quotations. So then what I can do is just put this in a sys out just to see if it works. I'll just say hash map before just so it's clear. Run this and you can see we get true. So that is your introduction to hash sets and comparing them a little bit to hash maps just depends on what you're looking for. And hopefully this has been a good introduction for you guys. For hash maps, you can have duplicate data, but you cannot have duplicate keys. So it can work the same way, similar to a hash set if you would like. Just make sure that the key is unique and then you won't have duplicate data, as long as people don't have numerous keys, which they shouldn't if it's unique. So anyways, I'm rambling. Thank you guys. I really appreciate you watching the series and hope everyone's doing good. See you in the next one.